Hey everybody, welcome to Enhanced Don't Distract, episode number 41. I actually looked it up and I'm ready to go this week. So in today's episode, we're talking about borrowing church gear and how that works. Do you allow it? Do you not allow it? All that kind of jazz. Uh, in today's episode, is my co-host, Jordan Horace. still need a nickname for you, but we'll just call you Jordan for right now. Okay. Maybe we should chat GTP works. nicknames for you. I mean, we could. It'd be really <laughs> interesting if it comes up with. So, <laughs> Maybe we'll I'm convinced ChatGPT like runs on coffee, and everything is coffee related. Hmm. Um, all right, all right, okay. Just, I don't like coffee though. So, <laughs> okay, yeah. Fun times. <laughs> <laughs> let us which let us know what you think ChatGPT runs on and and uses as a uh, a base level comparison for everything. I think it runs on hamsters and wheels. That we're going to talk. We should actually talk about AI at some point. That should be a good topic. Yeah, at some point. Let anyway. us know what you want to know about AI. I've got some ideas. I've got some thoughts. Um, so, yeah, he's got thoughts. I think we all have thoughts. I have an opinion on everything. That's true. That's just how I am. Yep. But we, need to, we need to get you some lights. I'm. Uh, I was thinking about that as well. You're so. very, you're very bright. Uh, I was going to say taupe. <laughs> I also realized that, yeah, that I blend right into the background of my uh, basement. So, yep. uh, it's good times. Just for keeping it real, everybody, I'm actually in my kid's playroom. So, hey, we've all been there. Yep. So, all right, what do we got for today? Yeah. So, talking about uh, barn equipment and how to manage that. But first, we want to talk about some gear. Um, I don't yes. know about you, Justin. Gear but, Corner. I don't know. We got to come up with a title for it. And some music. Yep. Uh, here, here, I got you. I got, oops, ah, oops, ah, oops, ah, oops, ah, oops. Is that good? Um, let's keep moving. Sean, can we can we make some music for that? Yeah, we should get Sean. He's yeah, he's he's a musician. Sean, I need music for this theme. There, now he knows. Yep, it's on his to do list. We need some music for our gear corner. <laughs> there it is. Get it. Welcome to the gear section. Welcome to the gear section. All right, go away. Can, can you even hear me? Can yes. you even hear me? Too? I can hear you. Are these open? And we go are away. Actually oh. recording. I'm not needed anymore. <laughs> All right. Never we'll a dull moment here. We'll see if we edit that out or not. No, we won't. Um, it, it'll be there. Yeah, it'll be there. Uh, I don't know about you, Justin. But, you know, you're working in a hot hot space. It's summertime, so it's always a little bit hotter. All the time. Uh, Certainly also if you're working in like a new construction area, there's not HVAC controls guaranteed, honestly. Nope. Um, So do you have anything that you like to bring along to help resolve that? It is what I refer to as it is fan season, and I definitely have my handy-dandy Milwaukee M18 fan here. Mm -hmm. I've got the proper color. You've got the wrong color. Mine looks bigger. Uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, put it in. Yeah, yes. It might be. But no, so we really do love these. I mean, obviously, we each bought one. Uh, totally portable. It uses your Milwaukee or DeWalt platform. I don't know if you can uh, hear that. Oh, I can hear it. It moves air. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Getting cooler already. I'm already cooled down. But I mean, like what? <laughs> these... I mean, I think I got mine for like a hundred bucks. Yeah, me too. Um, you already have the battery. Uh, it's they don't oscillate, but like the, you can rotate the head, you can hang them, um, you can dial up and down the fan, uh, oh, yeah. and they really like do a great job at just keeping the air moving and keeping you cool. It is surprising how powerful that little fan is and how cool it is. Uh, I will literally like I'll prop it up on like a rack when I'm working in a rack. Uh, Cause you know, a lot of churches, even when they do have air conditioning in the building, they don't turn it on while we're in, installing. Cause like they only turn it on during Sundays right? Uh, cause everything's computerized and it's like most people don't aren't in the building. So uh, yep. that will prevent me from sweating through 17 shirts because I sweat just thinking about sweating. So same. Um, that's just kind of the nature of my body chemistry. Um, yep. But yeah, uh, I love it. Uh, it's, it's probably one of the, the longest lasting tools I've had that, uh, I still carry around with me constantly, hence why it's literally sitting on my desk next to me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, to everybody like this is, this is, this is obviously not gear we're trying to sell, but it's just like, these are really things that we really find helpful. 
Uh, and like Justin said, like just bringing it along to, to sites, you never know if you're going to need it. Um, yeah, just something to think about if you're, if you get a little hot or if you're working in hot conditions mm-hmm. as well. So, all right, let's jump into kind of our main topic for today. Uh, yes. just kind of how to handle loaning equipment out, borrowing, leasing, renting, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. How do we manage that? Um, because I don't know about you, Justin, but like the worst is going to happen. Somebody will not return something or something will return broken. Um, yeah. So what are some things that we can do to maybe give structure and organization to that so that we can protect our gear? Yeah, I think ultimately I, I think that it needs to be said that it is up to you, right? As the you know, the senior pastor or you know, the leader, whoever's in charge, right? It's it's really up to them. So there isn't one size fits all. Uh, you know, because like smaller intimate communities are going to be way more lenient than larger communities, right? Um, so I think where my head goes is like I kind of want to start with kind of like my experience with this. So like when I was on staff at, at the church here in town that uh, that you worked at as well, mm-hmm. um, we were we were originally purchased MacBooks from the, like by the church, a hundred percent, like they paid for MacBooks. And then we being in the department that we were in, we had access to, we were entrusted with, uh, like, a, some, you know, DSLR cameras and their rule at the beginning was kind of like, just don't abuse it. Make sure it comes back. If it breaks, you know, just do the right thing and replace Stewardship. it, you know, you know, right. Um, and that worked, I would say for a majority of the staff. And like always, there's always the one that one ruins guy. it. Yep. And we had, we had a, well, it wasn't just one, but it was like a couple of guys that were like, they were legitimately burning through MacBooks, like really expensive MacBooks. And we were like, what in the world is going on? And yep. the way that, I mean, that church was large. So like they had like an actual IT department and they kind of were like, wait, why are we spending $2,500 on another MacBook that we just bought you like a year ago? Like, you don't yeah. do anything that would require a brand new, fully decked out MacBook like a year later. Yeah. You know, and so then that's when the questions started getting, you know, given. And it was like, oh, these people were like hardcore freelancing, making like thousands of dollars on the side and were rendering those computers out of oblivion. And then the church wasn't able, you, they weren't able to do their church projects or their church projects mm-hmm. started taking longer and longer and longer because. They were just beating the crap out of the equipment. I mean, it's it's yeah. gear, right? It's a computer. Yeah. It's going to end up wearing down and slowing down over time. Right. No matter how good it is, it's just the reality of it. So yeah. they, it's use and it's just use. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what they ended up doing, and I, I really like this, and I don't know if this is how it still was because uh, I've been gone whew, since 2016 now. Mm-hmm. Um, but how they landed the plane was they said, hey, listen, um, if you want to freelance and want to use this equipment, right? We don't have a problem with that, right? Because the leadership was very much like, hey, we know that we're, we're not always like the highest paying jobs on, on the market. If you, you know, what, a church, not the highest paying, right? So they said, hey, if you want to use it for freelance, we'll split the machine cost 50-50, right? So if it's a $3,000 okay. $3, computer, we'll give you 1500 bucks. You give us 1500 bucks. You can use it for freelance, but the church, you're required to use it for church. Like it's yeah. still owned half by the church, right? Yeah. But now you've got some skin in the game. Right. You've got some skin in the game. Owner. Right. So now if it does need to get replaced in a year, the church would be is going to be willing to replace again in a year and spend 1500 bucks. Now they're in their two-year cycle that we were in because that was kind of what we did is we got ours replaced. Our computers then got trickled down to you know interns and other people that weren't using them for the same amount of like guts that we had, right? So you ended up having some like i7, you know, quad core, 32 gigs of RAM, you know, being used by like a secretary for something, which was kind of funny. Right. But it was like four years, yeah. five years old at that point. That's you know, a trickle down. That's yeah. that's a good use. It's a second, it's a second life for the machine. hundred percent. And then so that was the church's way of saying, like, listen, like we're not gonna stop you from making some money and wanting to work here, you know, but we can't we can't in good conscience like just keep paying for things for you to go and make money on the side. 
So yeah. that was their thing. I, so I don't know how that kind of ended. Uh, like once I left, I know that mm-hmm. there was some discussion of making that just go away and say, Hey, no, like the church is going to buy it. You can't use it for anything but church related things. Yeah. Uh, I know like the camera gear kind of got locked down because people were like, you know, taking it to shoot on like, you know, beaches and like it'd come back covered in sand and they weren't like cleaning it and they weren't Yikes. taking care of it. All sorts of stuff like that. So I think that that's, <sighs> That's where we kind of landed, um, mm-hmm. and I know like that all the camera gear kind of got like hardcore shut down, uh, yeah. and then computers. So I think that overall, it, it's going to really depend on what is the equipment. Yeah. So, and 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 I think what you're also saying here is history too. You know, yeah. if uh, unfortunately we've got a history of abuse, we gotta we gotta curtail that. Um, would there be? So we've talked about laptops, cameras. Is there anything that might be off limits where you're like, hey, you really should probably not let that be loaned out or leave the mm-hmm. building or unracked? Like Any, what anything you, what you think about that? Yeah, anything that is mission critical to a Sunday morning service. Yep. I'm not loaning out the soundboard, <laughs> you know, for you to do a wedding. I hate the idea of churches. I have clients that do this and it drives me absolutely bonkers is that they go during the summertime we take and we go and we do, you know, outdoor service for four weeks yep. and we take the console out of the sanctuary. And I'm yep. like, no, 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 no. You either need to buy something cheaper that can do that or B, you need to rent something. Rent. Because as soon as you start moving something, well, though we've done it for a couple of years and it's been fine. Yeah. It's fine until it's not. Yeah. And then that potential 10, 12, 15, $20,000 sound console yep. is broken. And the all of the money you saved from not needing to buy a five thousand dollar or a three thousand dollar X thirty two or SQ yeah. console or whatever or the you know eight hundred dollars a summer to rent a soundboard from a local AV rental company yep. you know seems a lot more appealing. Yep. Right. So. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Ca- camera cam- cameras that are main for you know, your live stream, right? Like anything like that. Like I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine, um, Joyce Meyer's team taking the main camera one and camera two outside for an outdoor event or to shoot a wedding or to shoot a a family wedding, right. Or a funeral or something like that. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine that. Right. Yeah. And again, this is, you know, I, I hate to be the pessimist and not believing in people. Um, uh, that might come as a newsflash to some people, others <laughs> not. Uh, but like, if it is mission critical, as Justin, you said earlier, like right. you have to assume that they will not bring that back before Sunday afternoon. Like yeah. you, if you, if you cannot miss it on Sunday morning, you should not be letting that go. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think that that's pessimistic. And I think that that's one of the hard things that people have a hard time getting over is like, what, like I, say no in a church. Well, yeah. I mean, there, there's that, but then like, well, it's saying that I'm not trusting that person. Well, it, Here's my thing. Like, let's go back to like my scenario, right? I was yeah. using like the church had a Canon 7D and I had a MacBook, right? And I was doing some freelancing. Mm-hmm. It was very little, you know, it was like I did maybe, I don't know, seven projects a year. And most of them were honestly in the in the church. Like it was people renting the church and the, yeah. the church didn't provide that as a service. So it was like they had to bring their own stuff. You in. would kind of fill that gap. Yeah. So I would fill that gap uh, and I would use the church equipment. And, you know, like I barely made any money. It was like, you know, I'd do like a recap video for a dancing group, right? And mm-hmm. they'd pay me 200 bucks. And I'd film the entire event, edit the the video, and then give them a deliverable. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was And that was fine, right? One of the things that like when I started to realize, hey, I don't really want to take this camera – was well at the time it was a 7d which was an expensive camera and it had an l series lens on it that we used so i was like this is like probably twenty five hundred three thousand dollars worth of equipment i don't have three grand if i drop this and break it or heaven forbid someone else comes up and smacks it out of my hand right or grabs it i set it or down to do something and walks away Right. Or someone steals it. Right. Or it's in my bag and someone drops something, you know, like all of the crazy things that could technically happen. But but I'm now on the hook. Yeah. But again, you have to prepare for that worst. Like that could happen. And you you have to be ready for that. And then also, yeah, as a renter, you also have to be ready for that too. Like, do I have the funds to cover this to make the other, the church whole again? Yeah. So, because I can't screw the church over. 
Right. Right. That, cause that's not okay. And like, I would assume that everyone that's listening to this podcast has that same ph- philosophy. Oh, well, obviously I don't want to do that. So that's, that's where it becomes really complicated. Like, so I think there's, there's two different sides of that, right? There's the, I'm going to loan gear out to, uh, most likely people that are listening to this, a volunteer mm-hmm. or, um, versus like, Oh, we're taking something outside for a service, right? One is a hundred percent church related, a hundred percent church ordained, you know, that's a completely different scenario, right? The liability and everything is 100% on the church. And yep. they're like, nope, we're not going to buy extra equipment or we're not going to rent extra equipment to do these events outside or in this spare room or whatever. Yeah. And the equipment fails, drops, get broken, gets stolen because it's not in a locked room anymore, whatever yep. it may be. The church has 100% responsibility on that, right? Yep. And ultimately the senior pastor or executive or worship pastor, whoever's yep. in charge of it, right? Yeah. If I'm a volunteer or a staff member taking a camera to go do a podcast recording or shoot a wedding or I'm taking the guitar that the worship pastor plays or I am the worship pastor, I'm taking it to go do open yeah. mic night to make, you know, a couple extra bucks yep. or to another worship event, you know, for another church, you know, that's not ordained by my church, then yep. it's one of those like it becomes my responsibility. And mm-hmm. if I don't have that cash, what happens? Yeah. I break that $3,000 Taylor guitar and that's the guitar we lead worship with on Sunday morning. Yeah. Most likely you don't have another three grand just laying around. Th- that's my opinion. That's the yeah. way that I have to look at things. And I don't think yep. that that's being pessimistic. I think that that's being a good steward. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I guess I meant, well, let's think about maybe like from a, like an equipment manager perspective, like maybe you are uh, the guy or the gal that oversees and is purchasing, but then also operates some of this equipment. Mm-hmm. Um, and what if like a, just a church member comes up and is like, Hey, I, you know, maybe they're longstanding and, you know, they do want to, um, they want to borrow a speaker or like a, or a camera for somebody for their personal use. You know, are you, are we, do you, have you like had them sign a release thing? Cause obviously they, are not employed by the church and they're not doing church operations. So there's, yeah. they're kind of outside of the the realm. How, how do we, what's maybe a recommendation to approach those situations? My recommendation, I'm in that position. No, don't do it. Okay. Here's why biblically it says that if I loan money out that I don't, I shouldn't expect to get it back. Mm. Okay. I, I feel like that lands here too. Imagine you're, imagine you're a churchgoer, right? You go to my church, right? That I'm on staff at and I'm responsible for this. Yeah. And you come up to me and say, hey, can I borrow this speaker for, you know, this wedding that I'm doing? You know, my right. daughter's getting married and I want to have just this one little speaker, right? Yep. Say it's a thousand dollar speaker set. Yeah. It, it breaks, right? Gets yep. stolen, whatever the case may be. Yep. Right. You don't have that thousand dollars, but you've signed a release saying that if you break it, lose it. Yeah. Whatever you're going to pay that thousand dollars back. Yep. What am I as the church? Because that's the thing. I'm a representative of the church, right? I'm not me, Justin employee. I am ABC church, right? Yep. So now what do I do? Do I take you to small claims court and force you to what's that going to do for a, for our relationship? Yeah. Most likely you ain't going to want to keep going to my church, right? B you ruin all the relationships because of that. And the potential downside outweighs the potential positive side. Unless you as the church are in a position where if that thousand dollar speaker doesn't come back ain't a big deal. Right. 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 And I see, I see people like Ada Bible do it in my opinion, really, really well. A bigger church in our area, a bigger church in our area. They don't loan out equipment in that same kind of thought process. Uh, to churches specifically, like when churches need something for yeah. something, they end up just like they buy something and give it to the church. Yeah. They're like, hey, this is this is you know this is an outreach of ours, right? Yeah, this is a and, gift. Yeah, and then a lot of times they'll say, oh, we'll send someone out there, and the church will pay the person to physically do it, and it's like, hey, so like one of our staff members will come out, and the staff member will get paid, and the church will just take care of it. Yep. Right. Yep. Um. I, I really like that idea. I would prefer that idea. I would prefer yeah. the church take the hit financially to prevent all of the possible bad things to happen yeah. 
because then again, the church is taking sole responsibility. I, the staff yeah. member, am going to be deploying said speaker, camera, lighting, whatever, whatever, for yeah. said event that has been approved by the church, yep. right, to help a congregant that has been at the church for 8, 10, 15 years, right? What's mm-hmm. the harm in that, right? Hey, and like the, the thing is, like, that has to be a discussion, right, mm-hmm. with my staff member. Yep. We're going to give you guys a hundred bucks, but this is what we're going to do. You know, if this starts getting out of hand and egregious, we'll renegotiate how this is all going to function. But like, we'll pay you a hundred bucks to go and do this. And it's going to be a part of your job description. Right. Yep. So if you have to do this, we'll give you an extra hundred bucks on your, on your pay. Right. Mm-hmm. I think that that's fair. I think that that's good. We used to do that at res when we worked there for like funerals, right? You did funerals or you did weddings. It was outside of your normal 40, 50 hour work week. You get like 50 to 100 bucks depending on yeah. the size and length of the event type thought process. So yeah. I think that I would rather see that, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. You know, I, I as I think about it, you're you're certainly right. Like the church is taking a risk uh, and you're never going to take anybody to small claims court because that just looks really bad from the optics uh, point of view. Um, and it's just not worth it, right? It's yeah. not worth burning that relationship. Right, right. But at the same time too, if you're saying no – um, you could also potentially impact the relationship that way. Um, but this is also where I think you can also repoint, redirect them of like, Hey, you know, it's actually just not that much to rent. Um, and this is a yeah. good rental house. So making that connection, giving them it's, it's a, it's a no, but a yes. Right. Um, yeah, I, and I, I think, have uh, leased stuff out in the past. Uh, and there is just kind of like a, Hey, like, you know, bring this back. Don't break it. But yeah, yeah I've and I, 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 I think there, I think there's two things. I think, like, like you said, if I say no, that is potentially a burden on the relationship. I am a firm believer that if me saying no to you about borrowing equipment that you didn't pay for, you're not trying to pay for, or anything, you're trying to get something for free. Which I also don't believe that Scripture says that we're supposed to do that. I believe Scripture says yeah. that we're supposed to pay for what a people are worth hey, and what right. things are worth. Yep. Um, so if you're trying to get something for free out of the church and they say no, and that puts a stick so far up your carriage that like it causes a problem. There's with, other issues there. There's other issues there. And like, am I really worried about that relationship? I mean, mm-hmm. n- no, I'm not really worried about it at that point. It sucks yeah. that that's, that that's where the relationship is, but yeah. it's like, I look at it like this when I have a good friend, right. Mm-hmm. And I say, Hey Jordan, can I borrow your car? And it's your only car, and if that car gets destroyed, you're yep. screwed. And yep. you go, hey, man, like, I just – I don't know how good of a driver you are. And, like, if I lose my car, like, I, I'm out, right? Yep. I'm going to have to say no. I'm willing to help you, though. I'll drive yep. you to the airport instead. Right. Right? Right? That's how that interaction would go. And no one would have a problem with that. Everyone would go, yeah, I totally get that. Right? You're not my insurance. You know, I don't know what kind of insurance you have. If you have insurance, if you don't have insurance, yeah. you know, do you have 17 speeding tickets? Are you wanted by the law? And I don't know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like in yeah. a, in a one-on-one situation that that's how that conversation goes. And no one has a problem with that. Right. You know, maybe some crazy people who just expect everyone to say yes to them. Yeah. And but again, are involved in like a one-way relationship with people. So. Right. Yeah. So I think that in my head, it's like, why can't the church relationship be the same way? Yeah. Like, hey, we don't really know you. Now, I think that that changes, right? If you, like, let's say you go to my church again, right? Mm-hmm. And you're you're a big donor. You donate lots of money to the church, right? Yep. And I'm really close friends with you. We have yep. coffee every week, right? Like, you're coming over to barbecues, yeah. right? I know that you're responsible. I know you have the cash to replace it. That changes maybe some thought processes. Yeah. Right. Because then, you know, then it's not that big of a deal. Then the only real risk, all of the risks that I said earlier kind of go away. And the only risk now is that maybe you become a jerk and you don't pay for it, even though I know you can pay for it. Yeah. Right. Or you don't have that piece of gear for a little bit of time while it's being replaced. Yeah. I, I think that there's a lot that goes into that kind of thought yeah, process. Yeah. And and that's why we started off by saying it really depends on your situation and what yeah. you're comfortable with um, and kind of, yeah, how you want to handle things. And it, 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 it is also very much a case by case basis. I mean, it, it very much depends on who's asking for what gear, even, yeah. you know, when um, and their intended use. So, yeah. and the unfortunate thing I will say about like volunteers and staff members 
is we like to we I hear this all the time where it's like people are inherently good people. I I disagree with that. I don't think that that's what the Bible says, right? I think the Bible says that we're born into sin and that we're all sinful yep. creatures and without Christ, you know, like we would just be not good people. Yep. So I think that our our sinful human nature lends us to stretch things that shouldn't be stretched or go in a small direction that maybe isn't a big deal, but like, isn't necessarily like the right direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Oh man, I thought, I really thought that that person would have been, would have handled that situation better. Right. How many times have you said that? Oh yeah. And those are things that I, I take into account. And it's like, I look at it like this for everything is I want to set people up to succeed, not to fail. Yeah. And me and my wife have this conversation a lot where I go, you know what? No, for the kids, for certain situations. Yeah. Because I know that if we say yes, that's going to cause this chain reaction. And then I'm going to be upset with half of our kids. I don't want to be upset with half of our kids. And I know, I know that that is going to happen. Right. Because we've tried it 17 times and all 17 times it's happened. So, so that's even something else to consider is are you, by enabling people to borrow gear, rent gear, lease gear, whatever, um, regardless if there's money changing hands, you got to also think about like where does this go if we carry this out to the nth degree? You know, what if we get more people asking for this? What if we're right. renting out more and more gear? Um, you know, yeah, will that person that we yeah. don't trust, are they going to ask? Um, and, that, and that is where, yeah, you may have to shut down that conversation earlier. Um, to avoid that harder conversation down the road or, or, or just a nasty situation. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think, I, I think that borrowing and leasing gear, I think is just, it's messy and it's, it's hard. And I think it's something that I would avoid. I think that the only people that are borrowing quote unquote, borrowing equipment, not paying for it would be staff members. Mm-hmm. And like I said earlier on, you know, even that has caveats in my head. Yeah. Yeah. Really quick, what about in that situation? Do you let employees just borrow it straight away, um, or since there is some compensation, some money changing hand, would it be r- acceptable to expect maybe some compensation or reimbursement for that rental, essentially? Yeah, I think I think a lot of that comes down to l- multiple levels again, right? Is like how often is it happening? What extent of equipment's being rented? Mm-hmm. Um, so, not in a church. I we had an employee of a company that I, I worked for that our policy was like because we had some rental AV equipment, like pretty big stuff. Oh, like, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Like big PA, big lights. Yep. Um, that we would rent out for big events. And it wasn't like we had tons, but we had enough that we like we could throw a pretty pretty epic like little like yeah. five hundred person event, and no one would bat an eye at the production, right? Yeah, I mean, if you get the ask, you want to have the gear, and then you get the right. ask a number of times, and it's like, all right, let's let's make this happen. Yeah, well, Sorry. and it was one of those like we had a rental side, you know, and then we also had that equipment because we would like we would uh, deploy it for demos for clients, right? Oh, we yeah, want yeah. You to, we want you to buy this PA, so we own that PA, so you can hear it, right? Yeah, smart. Um, yeah, and our our policy at the company at the time was employees were allowed to borrow any of that equipment free of charge, mm-hmm. right? So employee A, hey, my sister's getting married, can I borrow you know a couple speakers and a couple <laughs> microphones? Sure, yeah, no problem. Yep. Right. I'm just imagining like you pull up and there's like flown array. This <laughs> it just like blows you out of the water. Well, no, because uh, like we had small stuff too, right? Well, so yeah, it was like the, yeah. this employee stuff on sticks and yeah, yeah, yeah. And the employee was they started, you know, and I mean, in his defense, like there was no stipulations given, right? And yep. so like there was no there was no bookends, right? Yeah. And so it was like, oh, you took you took a line array and you took. You know, our, you know, our whole hog, you know, lighting console and our M32 and you, you did a small festival for like 500 people, Mm -hmm. which is a gig that we would have charged for. Mm. Right. And so because there was no real bookends put in there, you know, it was like, you know, and I don't think that this guy was ever like nefariously, like just trying to like steal. Right. Because that's, that's technically what that is. It was just, he just wanted to be the guy that people could go to. And he's like, I got this. I got this. Right. 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 
So, you know, and it's like, I can't fault him for that. Um, and yeah. there was no hurt, hurt feelings, but it was like, that was like, when that was found out, it was like, bro, like, I mean, there's a level of like, come on, man, like you should know better than that. Right. Yeah. But again, it wasn't like he was like doing it intentionally to be like, you know, and sneaking over here and stealing all this money. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, building my empire over here with red yeah. beer. Yeah, it's not what was happening. So, you know, there was just more stipulations that had to be put in, right? Yeah. So now the now there's the bookends, right? Hey, like, yeah. no, this is this is what. Now if you do this, now you're intentionally doing it because you know you're not allowed to do that, right? Because we didn't tell you before. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that that comes down to that same kind of thought process, right? Is yeah. uh, I think there needs to be outspoken agreements, right? With, you know, everything, every I dotted, every T crossed. Yep. Right. Hey, I'm in a church that has a portable, like a full blown portable PA, right? Because I, I know some churches like that are in Michigan that, which is where we're at right now, yep. that because the winter sucks so much, is that they will literally do every service outside as soon as the weather is good. Yep, and they won't go in their sanctuary because they would yep. much rather be outside because we only really have like three really good months where you can do that without any problem. And then you have like another, like three months that might be really iffy. Right. It's, it's nice. We're also on the West side. So the sun stays out later, which yeah. I think is a game changer. Yeah. Um, just well, we, get, in, we, get lots, we get lots of lake effect though, which is what gives us the wild card. I mean, the fact yeah. that like right now, like we're recording this in the middle of June and mm-hmm. it was, you know, it was 40 degrees at my house the other day at night. Yeah, at night, but it's also going to be 92 next week. So. I understand that, but I'm just saying, like, the fact is, like, when it's 60 degrees outside, there's a lot of people that aren't going to want to be outside for a service in 60-degree weather. Yeah, yeah. Because that's, that's decently cold to be sitting still not doing anything. Yeah. Right? So I'm just saying, like, it, there's only about three really good months that the weather usually will permit without any hesitation to do an outdoor service. Yeah. Right? So they'll have those really nice things. Right? If I wanted to physically pay money and rent those uh, systems from that church Mm -hmm. as a staff member, I feel like you would need to have hardcore procedures put in place. How much is it going to cost? You're paying it up front, you know, or like you're paying a deposit up front. Yeah, deposit, exactly. You know, type thing. Here's here's what it's going to look like when it comes back, right? If it doesn't come back, you're going to get charged from this. If you don't pay it within a certain amount of time, Unless there is some sort of great reason, it's going to come out of your check. Yeah. yeah. Right. No hesitations, no questions. You know that yeah. this was going to happen. Sign on the dotted line. You know, it, it's clarifying expectations ahead of time. You're yeah. going to resolve so many issues in life if you clarify the expectations. I mean, we, you know, again, going back to kids, we do this with kids. Hey, don't do that. If you do that, X is going to happen. You right. Um, and I do, I do think. I'm I'm learning this more and more. It's just if you can clarify that, uh, yeah, just things run smoother. You don't run into issues. And then I also you don't feel bad because it's like, hey, yeah, I did have to enact this. I did have to take this out of your check. We talked about this. You agreed to this. Yeah, you sign on the dotted line. It's a yeah. sign. You actually have to physically have something signed. Yeah. Because yeah. imagine you don't have any documentation for that. And you just take like six hundred bucks out of someone's paycheck, right? Like that. yeah. <laughs> And they and they take you to small claims court because of that. Yeah, yep. and you go. Well, we said this and that and the other thing, and they lie because again, not everyone that is on staff at a church is a great human being, right? And six hundred bucks world. is a big deal. So yep. unfortunately, that's that's you know what we have to deal with 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 people yep. in general. And yeah, you know, I hate to like you said, be the boogeyman, right? And yeah. will you have any of these problems? You might not have any of these problems. You may have great staff members I hope that not. are super respectful. Everything comes back, you know, better than when it left. That's awesome. I don't, yep. I'm just saying it is that until it's not that. Yep. And if you're asking the question of should I, I'm going to ask you the question, why are you asking that question? Hmm. Right? Because in my mind, when, when I have a, I have certain friends, if they ask to borrow a tool, I don't hesitate to say yes. There's other friends that ask to borrow tools, and I go, "Hey, have you heard about this thing, Harbor Freight? Maybe I can come over and cut those two by fours for you." Yeah, right. So, like, because there's certain neighbors that I have that are like that, right? Oh yeah. You know, uh, my neighbor Matt. He was like, "Hey, can I borrow your jewel?" I was like, "Yeah, sure." Matt. Matt is his fake name. We we it's a name change. Yeah. <laughs> 
Because I, because I know Matt's going to bring my drill back. Yep. Steve, on the other hand, not so sure. Yep. <laughs> yep. So. Okay. Hopefully, this gives everybody some just some good food for thought on this topic, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, food. love to hear what you guys are doing. Uh, are you renting gear out? Are you having all, things that are off limits? How have you handled uh, situations? They haven't. Uh, they don't handle situations. Yeah, they, they handle the situations. Look, they're listening to this podcast like they handle situations. That's true. They handle, um, they handle that situation well. Or if the worst has happened to you, we want to hear about it. Leave a comment down below. Um, yeah, somebody returned a speaker and it was full of sand or, uh, you know, came back sopping wet or something like that. We want to <laughs> hear about it. Sopping wet. I, it could happen. At a restaurant. It, that it had fell a- in a fountain. I don't know. At a restaurant that had an L acoustic system in it, and the guy that was running sound said that he would tear it down every once in a while and take it on an event and then bring it back and put it back in. And I was like, no way. There's no way. <laughs> if it's rigged, it's, it's not moving. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. honestly, like, honestly, though, seriously, though, if you're moving rigging stuff, like that can wear on the rigging, and that's seriously not safe. Well, especially if it's an install product and not a like yes. a touring product. Oh. Yep. Yep. So yeah, that's true. If it's true, yeah. Um, and if you don't know how to deploy system, you know, like the yeah, the yep. negatives. Like I said, the negatives just so much outweigh the positives in my yep. head. Yep. Right. Yep. And it's like if you have someone that's wanting to do that kind of stuff, like just let the church, you know, foot the bill for the rental. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, we want to help you out. Like a speaker and a stick. I mean, bro, it's like 150 bucks. You know, just do it. Just bite the bullet. Right, right. <laughs> and then if they're using it well, like so often and like and their business takes off, like, hey, yeah, like get some better gear, get some other stuff or. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So, yeah. Again, comment down below. Tell us what you think. Tell us what your opinions are on these things and your experiences. We want to hear about it. So tell me why I'm the boogeyman. Yeah. Yeah, tell us we're wrong. We're not wrong. Look. Jordan, you're, you're never wrong. Mm-hmm. You're like my wife. Always right. Uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I am an INTJ uh, on Myers-Briggs, so uh, there might be some truth to that. All right. Do you know what Do you know what Myers-Briggs your wife is all at all? Are you mm-hmm. get in, do you get into the Myers-Briggs at all? No. Or do you get into uh, the Enneagram? No, um, yeah. what was the one? I did one of those, like, you're talking about yes, like those, those personality test things, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, I did one, I don't know, when I was like 18. I don't remember right. what it said. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Iron no. Man's my favorite, Iron Man's my favorite Marvel character, if that tells you anything about my personality. Okay. Well, but see, but you're a tech guy, so that's, like, that makes sense. Yeah. That might little, be your new nickname. You can see my little, my Iron, little Man. Iron Man bobblehead right there. Yep. What's my new nickname? We might we might be calling you Iron Man. I, I'll take it. Okay. He is red, like me. <laughs> I'm actually wearing a red I'm shirt, not which, wrong, makes my, which makes my face redder. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but that actually might be another topic. Let us know if there's stuff you guys want to hear about. Um, I'm a big believer in personality t- uh, testing just to help uh, maximize team interactions and understanding how people communicate or how they work. Um, it can be really helpful. To understand that, and, and even honestly, yourself. Like I've found out a lot, a lot about myself doing personality types, and it's been really helpful. So, yeah, um, yeah. Sweet. And then I'll uh, maybe one of these times I'll tell you my Enneagram joke. So, I can't wait to hear it. My kids make up jokes all the time. Most oh, no, of them this, are really bad. This is bad. good though. This is oh, a good, a good one. one. Yeah, nice. this is like I'll tell you offline here. Just all the really good jokes are usually like really inappropriate, which really sucks. This, this one's one, clean as a whistle. Nice. Yeah. Say it, say it on here then. Okay. So, you know, somebody comes up to you, hey, which, what's your Enneagram number? And obviously they're into the Enneagram. They know the numbers and they want to know yours. Mine is I'm a 10. Nice. And the joke is that there is no 10. It <laughs> goes to nine, but I'm also just joking that like I'm a 10, like a 10. Yeah. Um, even though I know that's up for debate, don't don't leave that comment in the, in the comment. <laughs> but then then you get them freaking out. Like, wait a second, is there like a secret enneagram? Like, how do I not know about a ten? 
Yes. What? I'm a, I, and I know about it because I'm a 12. Right. <laughs> and you're like, wait, what? I thought they went to nine. It goes to, ten, it goes to 12? Well, you didn't get the update? Right. <laughs> then you got them freaking out about the stuff that they're asking. And just seeing their response, like, is hysterical to me. Oh, yeah. And you have to so. be very serious about it. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. You got, like, you got to play it off like you know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> you can even, even if you want, like, if you did people that don't know about the Enneagram, there's, like, wing numbers. You could be, like, um, 10 wing 2 or 10 wing 20. They'd be, like, what? What? <laughs> I just thought it went to 9. There's more numbers? <laughs> so that's. All right. I love it. I. My wife hates it because I say it every time. <laughs> That's hilarious. So. Yeah, I don't know enough about that world to like have that like really hit me. Uh, but I mean, all the people that like, do that, I could see why that would be funny. That, but that's the thing. You don't like you're not into it. But if yeah. you're like, wait, what? I thought it just went to nine. <laughs> yeah. So. That's good. Yeah. All right. Make sure you subscribe. Give us a comment if you're listening on the audio. Uh, make sure it's a five star review. Remember, we only accept five star reviews. Yeah. I learned that from the great Dave Tobias. Uh, no one here knows him, but uh, he's a wise man, and uh, he told me that we only accept five star reviews. So. Maybe we should read some five star reviews. Um, if you leave five star review, can we read some of those? Sure. I'd have to go through and look and see if we. Honestly, okay. I don't even look at reviews. I was always told not to read the comments. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I have not read the comments either. We should probably read the comments. I mean, I, I read the comments. Okay. I just don't read the reviews. I don't get notifications about reviews. Yeah, I'm kind of notification. I try to minimize notifications. I do too. But maybe we'll pick one. So if you want to leave us a five-star review, you might read it on a show. Why don't you go and read them this week? Yeah. And then Add we'll it. we'll throw one up. Adding it to my to-do list here. Boom. There it is right there, folks. You're seeing the podcast, Inner Workings, behind the scenes, live, right before your very eyes. So, again, make sure you hit subscribe. And that's my radio puker voice. All right. See you guys later. (laughs) Bye. Take it easy.